Uh, today is the fourth day of the conference, and this morning we are honored to have Dr. Doji Rapton, Chief Medical Officer of Meng Zikang, Bangalore, to enlighten us on the topic on Soaripa, knowing cancer and its important parameters. So, Dr. Doji Rapton, please. Okay. <laughs> ตุเจดเวทันเจจอมเดนเดซันซัมเตเวงเอนเดตุงเยโยโตซุมเนเซซังเยเมนเยลาเบนเดรายเวลาชาเซโลตุเดเรเมจิตันเคบาร์ตุ
cancer still seems to be growing and haunting the imaginations of each and everyone. And uh, there, even in, in uh, the one thing which was, which I think may be very, very interesting is that though, and the statistics gives us the information that the cancer actually spreads like a wildfire, you know, more so in the more developed countries, more developed countries, more wealthy countries like US and Europe. Well, but another interesting factor is though, you know, the cancer, cancer is developing as well as spreading very fast there, the rate of the kind of fatality, the mortality rate in the US and Europe seems to be coming down. So the death rate of the cancer is slowly, slowly coming down. But though the incidence of cancer compared to US and Europe is not that much, not that very fast in countries like India and Southeast Asia, but interestingly, the rate, death rate is very, very strong, it's very high. Almost 70% of the patient in India as well as Southeast Asia succumbs finally to the disease. So therefore, from this also we can uh, at least, you know, the, uh, come out with some, some understanding that, you know, the treatment, the better treatment, the better facilities still holds good, still being very helpful. Now, you know, I don't have to say that what exactly, as I will say, is, the, is cancer. In a very simple term, according to Western biomedical science, it's actually a kind of uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells in your body system. And that abnormal cells hmm, slowly, slowly solidifies. And in Tibetan medicine, we say, lungi chile, lungi chile tenje. Earlier, it was more in the more in the form of in a more in the form of flowing or moving. Then slowly, it gets solidified because of the action of the lung. And then it metastasizes, means it spreads, it progresses, and from one organ to the another organ, from one kind of channel to the another channel, one part of the body to the another part of the body. So that is the nature of the cancer. And in our Tibetan medicine, the, we are uh, very uh, kind of, uh, the, uh, it was very clear that this type of, this Dene was actually mentioned in the Henge Ma Dezen, in the category, in the chapter of the eight congenital disorders. Eight congenital disorders. And a lot of information were also given. And if you look at our, you know, the, uh, the uh, origin of the medical system, which can date back to something like 7th century, 8th century, you know, at least that much kind of information, you know, on the cancer and its kind and its nature and different types of cancer and the uh, typical, typical kind of, uh, you know, the characteristics of the cancer cells and its activities. And there's something which is very, very interesting and very uh, kind of, uh, you know, the thought provoking. Now, according to Tibetan medicine, cancer is actually something which uh, have a very strong kind of influences, very strong association with your diet and lifestyle. Diet and lifestyle, no doubt, plays a very important role. And beside that, it is very important for all of us to you know take into consideration of these factors which are which are day-to-day -day kind of day-to-day uh, -day issues and which have been without any doubt without any argument been confirmed as the most kind of important risk factors that brings up the, the cancer tobacco use cigarette and tam tambagu cigarette tambagu khani and overweight, 
being overweight hmm? being overweight also takes us to the to the to the chapter of the indigestion of the Tibetan medicines where we have thangma mashu and nyingma mashu what thangma mashu and nyingma mashu nyingma mashu happens to be very very common type of indigestion and that can be easily treated also but thangma mashu indigestion of the essence happens to be that group of that category of diseases you know capable of giving rise to so many kind of you know chronic diseases including the cancer so unhealthy diet and lifestyle naturally lack of especially lack of food with the uh, more fibers lack of fruits in fru fruits intake intake of greens but mostly dependent on mostly depend on what we call it in we, we Tibetan uh, doctors commonly called you know uh, the uh, the sajur, I mean hot spicy hot spicy savorish food items fatty greasy fatty greasy type of food items mm? and unwhole, unhealthy unwholesome as well as uh, you know uh, not fresh, long preserved, refrigerated kind of food items are definitely, the, you know, a source of the, uh, you know, cause of the cancer. Lack of physical activity, alcoholic use, HPV infection. Though, though, nothing is really very seriously or heavily pronounced in in India as well as, you know, in Asia. You know, as compared to the uh, incidence of these things in the U.S. and U.S. and Europe, is a HPV, human papilloma virus, that gives rise to uh, uh, the cervix cancer. And hepatitis infection by hepatitis. Now we used to see, you know, in our Tibetan communities, and uh, we have a high incidence of hepatitis B, well, high incidence of hepatitis B, which actually, according to the statistics. Statistics, it's abominably high as compared to any other countries, according to our population size. The total population, the percentage of the hepatitis B kind of incidence in Tibetan population is considered something like seven to nine percentage of the total population. Which it's you know for for many is a kind of a more epidemic proportion. And exposure to the lot of uh, you know the you know the uh, the radiations, radiations, and external. Now now we now uh, nowadays we consider our body as a kind of a naked. Now so me shun al jigi wa har sire magdon chirbur ralga chedang sung sigir wa magdon chirbur ralga chedang sung. You are actually you know trying to fight trying to fight wage a war. With your yourself totally naked with some kind of uh, you know the weapon, but against your the mighty enemy, you are totally defenseless. You are totally naked. There's no tamok, tamok, and you, no <laughs> protection, no cover, nothing. Magdong chirpur, ralga chetan sung sidwa, ondirwa. So therefore, we we are in a kind of uh, you know in a kind of uh, condition, atmospheric kind of condition, environmental condition. Where, where every minute, every second, we can be infected. So therefore, the pollution, the atmospheric pollution, the air pollution, the water pollution, the earth pollution, food pollution, there is pollution everywhere. Our, actually, every day we consume so many things in the, in the form of our food, which are all, most of them are polluted with some insecticides, some chemicals, some pesticides, so many things. Therefore, imagine the status of our body system in this modern day kind of society. And this is indoor smoke. Uh, I found it a bit interesting because we also see some cases among our elderly generations especially in the mon monastic setup and uh, monastic setup where though the lung cancer are not that very uh, not that very pronounced but still 
a, a sizable number of uh, pe sizable number of elder generations, especially the elder kind of monks and geishas, who also have a lung cancer. And then, when you are trying to find out why, why he, this, uh, you know, the elderly monk have a lung cancer, it was very clear that they confined in a very small room, with without much kind of air flow, no, without much ventilation. But every morning till night, incense, the smoke from the incense filled up the whole room. But they are so used to that. But they are so used to that, that they, they don't consider it as some kind of threat. But then, as a doctor, we have to be vigilant. We have to be you know, aware of all this and should be able to inform, give the inform kind of uh, in, in the, the information to the patient. And uh, there are actually now, w when it comes to the understanding, when, 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 we, when, when I say knowing the cancer, it was very important, knowing cancer. Knowing the cancer is like knowing the kind of, uh, you know, the, the criminal, you know, knowing the thief. If you don't know the thief and what it looks like and how it actually enters into your house and empties all your <laughs> belongings, if you don't know the thief, you're always at risk. So therefore, and most important factor in challenging the cancer kind of, you know, the growth is actually know the cancer. So there are, in modern biomedical science, they have different categories of cancer, different natures of cancer, which are called squamous cell cancers, the umdoa, squamous cell cancer, adeno, the adenocarcinoma, well, cancer, and tumor of neuroendocrine origin. Hmm? Cancer, the sarcoma type of cancer. And blood-related cancer. In blood cancer also, you, in blood cancer also, you have, you know, a, 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 so many kind of different types of cancer there. You know, acute minor leukemia, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, chronic minor leukemia, chronic lymphoblastic leukemia, multiple myeloma, so the mangu yung doa, ta dene kurang na na lola. Then so it is very important to understand what does when when the doctor describe when the patient brings you the file together with that and when you go through the patient's file when it's written the adenom adenocarcinoma, adenocarcinoma of the stomach. Normally you don't get something like squamous cell carcinoma of the stomach. It is basically adenocarcinoma of the stomach. But you can get squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. But you, it, uh, generally, most of these, m most of these kind of, uh, the, the, uh, it uh, depends on the cell types and its activities. Cell types, what kind of uh, different activities it brings up. So therefore, it may be important, it may be important for all of us, when especially the doctors, to understand what exactly does mean by these different categories or different types of, uh, you know, cancer. In Tibetan medicine, we have uh, three different kind of, uh, you know, the uh, two two major types of cancer, which is chi nang ni sirwa chi, wa chi li chi dang nang ni external and internal sirwa. Ah. External and internal sirwa. External nala chi di sharu zai de dang sum sirwa. Wa and sharu zai de dang sum sidi any the kasang ato na muscle la di che dinge. Wa ato na di la muscle muscle cells muscle tissues dang sum la di che dinge. Any bone ruba la di che dinge. Any za it can be a nervous system, it can be a nerves, it can be, you know, uh, it can be a blood vessels. Well, you think, eh? well, the, and each, you could see that in, there's a description for each and every uh, kind of uh, uh, nature of these diseases. What do you mean by shai dene? Cancer which are associated with muscle cells and tissues. Cancer which are associated with the bones and nerves. 
these are different categories. And this uh, also, in, it's very interesting to find that, you know, though, though the, the much of the information, how, there's so many information on the cancer that we, the modern kind of research has brought about, but then these are the, these are the information that we have gathered from, you know, centuries old medical text, dating back to something like sixth and seventh century. It was clearly mentioned in the medical text that do not let this disease progress further. So early treatment is highly advised in this. Once it gets fully matured, fully progressed, then it can come out, flow, or like pus from the both the ends. That was that we see almost in every kind of, uh, you know, the uh, in incidents in our life with the, uh, the cancer patients. For the wound fully gets fully opened up. First of all, it comes, comes out with some kind of uh, small hardened kind of nodules. Uh, and it slowly becomes bigger and bigger. Uh, first of all, there's nothing much, but then slowly it starts to kind of uh, show some discoloration. Then it becomes little, little uh, reddish, and then reddishness slowly comes into some blackishness, and then from that it opens up, and then you could see the rotten kind of smell, the pus coming out. You could, in, in fact, see the you know when it comes out, like especially in the neck, you could you know from <laughs> outside you can see all the kind of teeth inside also, and when you try to take food from your mouth, it comes out from the wound. These are the uh, highly advanced and prog kind of pro uh, the progressive type of cancer. So therefore, it has, it also clearly mentioned that these types of dis disease is very difficult to treat, hmm? but it has to be, you know, it has to be dissolved with the help of the medicinal bath and moxa bashans. And and this is how you get it. It was one very important statement from the Mengal hand up on the uh, the Negi de the Kares level, Negi Gudi, Negi Gudi Tain, Sons Ta Negi Gudi Tain was not Kanye Kangmang Tars, Negi Tain, Kanye Kangmang Tars. So the, the core, main cause of the nature of the disease is blood. So therefore, it is important to take out the blood from its nearest kind of site. Impure blood. Impure blood. The kind of causative factor, causative factor that which, actually, uh, which actually helps in the manifestation of the cancer and aggravation of the cancer uh, something to do with the infection. So therefore, the herbal medications, so very uh, uh, the kind of uh, the uh, strong herbal medication to be given, in especially to bring down the rate of the infection. Uh, and important thing is to the detoxification process. Because there are a lot of kind of debris inside your blood streams. A lot of necrotic necrotic conditions. And most, you have to think that most of your blood by this time have become very impure. And impure blood always occludes, always obstructs the flow of the flow of the energy. Flow of the energy and flow of your, uh, and, and the, uh, your own kind of blood vessels and different types of channels through which the life force energy runs. Well, therefore, it is very important that this detoxification through the herbs, hmm? different herbs are also considered very important. So, and therefore, now the, we, yeah, in Western biomedical science, when, it, when you, Come, uh, come across cancer patients. So first of all, they have this. They have this standard kind of, uh, you know, plan, the what to do with the cancer. Hmm? 
every doctor have that standard regimen, first of all, in chemotherapy. Hmm? After the bout of the six cycles of chemotherapy, no matter how much chemotherapy, then surgical, and then radiation. Well, now, another, I think there were some uh, points, some questions were raised by some of our, you know, the audience, especially when Dr. Tenzin uh, Shodhan was giving the presentation, whether, whether, you know, we should give Tibetan medicine hmm, when the patient is undergoing chemotherapy. Well, this, this is the type of question, which are very interesting, very important questions. Now, we have, um, um, you know, at, Actually, in, in our practice, general practices, we don't have, uh, honestly, a set of rules. These set of rules, cancer, initially, at the first instances, immediately giving, ah, precious pills are very good, precious pills are very, uh, you know, strong, powerful, immediately precious pills start, if you start with the precious pills, it doesn't really work that way, you know. Patient comes to us, case comes to you with the chemotherapy, six cycle, eight cycle, no more. And his or her body system totally kind of, uh, a, a, what do you call it, poisoned. Marwe, totally poisoned hmm? and impure. And the and, uh, whole body system absolutely kind of uh, weak, emaciated, uh, run down. In that kind of situation, if you give precious pills, what happens? So, in Nanazu Meshu Nalo, Di Yorwa, Pajna, Rinjing Rigdi, especially the precious pills are considered so powerful, and not only precious, but very powerful, that Digi, Nudi, 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 the vessels, you know, to which the Senge Penna Senge Karme Omash in Tlavro, Semi Senge Karme Omadi, and Rinjim Mahin, Rinjim Mahin, no Nyemba Sidua, no Nyemba. And no Nyemba Lube, no Jan Chala, or Major Jan Possumunde. No Jan Chala, or Major Jan Possum. If you give the, the <laughs> if you put the milk from the Senke Carmo, the, uh, the, the line from the, the snow line, uh, and in the ordinary kind of cup, ordinary vessel, the cup also breaks down. So therefore, you need a kind of uh, the, uh, the, so therefore, no young chalo, no young it doesn't really help in there. Well, it doesn't really stick. Therefore, more important thing, first of all, to rehabilitate the patient. Well, rehabilitate the patient, build up his own kind of uh, immune system, build up his measure of the strength and stamina. Then slowly, you can start giving some stronger medications. That's how it should work. You know? the, the, it is very important that suppose if the patient is undergoing chemotherapy, normally in, in my kind of uh, you know, understanding and my practices, I always prefer to give patients with the only supporting medicines, not the main medications, supporting medicine, medications. In that way, legally also we are safer. Marwe, legally also we are safer. And since patient is also undergoing very powerful, highly toxic kind of you know, therapies, on top of that, we also give all our kind of strength of the medicines. It doesn't work that way, no? It's very, very, very clear about that. So therefore, it is, I think it is highly advisable in such situation if the patient is undergoing especially chemotherapy, not to give out the full medications, main medication, or especially the precious pills. So you at least give some, uh, what we call it, some supporting medicine, supporting medications, which are also very, very important, and which are also part of the, our, it should be the part of the research on the cancer, how Tibetan medicine works, well, in complementary with the chemotherapy, well, in complementary with the chemotherapy, in reducing the side effects of the chemotherapy, improving the immune systems of the patient, and giving a sense of wellness, a well-being to the patient. So these are very important parameters which we need to observe, with especially when you give the supporting medicines also. 
and once the patient has gone for chemotherapy and surgery. And it's also very important to keep in mind not to give our medicines well the, when the patient is hospitalized. Without much kind, uh, kind of understanding of the situation of the patient, if something happens in the hospital, all the blame will come to you. The doctors in the hospital, corporate hospital, they are definitely going to blame everything on what you have taken as a uh, the herbal medications. So therefore, it may be very important for us to keep in mind not to give our medicines when the patient is hospitalized. That it can be, of course, you can give some decoctions. Tuldang is very popular. You can give tuldang. You can give Tibetan uh, the green teas. That's not an issue. Well, but we have to be very careful with giving the medications. This has happened. This has happened, and this has created a lot of uh, unpleasant kind of, uh, you know, the what do you call it, atmosphere between the doctor and the patient, and the doctor and the doctor also. So therefore, now surgery. Once the surgery is completed, and then patient is rehabilitating, then you can start with the Tibetan medicines slowly with the increasing kind of dosage, increasing strength of the medications. Now earlier, and 10 years back, 20 years back, because I come across some, I think, sizable number of the cancer patients. Because my base is not only in Bangalore, I, Chennai, Hyderabad, Kerala, Mumbai, most of the, you know, the cities and towns and cities nearby, where most you know, patients come to us with the last stages of the cancer, at the terminal stages of the cancer. Because nobody thinks of Tibetan medicine at the first stage or second stage. You know, having undergone all kinds of, all kinds of treatments, all kinds of therapies, chemo, radiation, and then nowadays stem cell therapies, you know, Im, uh, kind of, uh, what do you call this? Uh, immunotherapy, stem cell therapy, immunotherapy, so many therapies. And then finally, finally, the disease has gone to such an extent that it becomes totally intractable. What? Disease has actually totally merged with the every fibers, every cells and tissues of your body system. There is a very interesting kind of, you know, the verses from our medical text. Well, in order to, you know, uh, uh, our, uh, you know the see our gold shine, if there's some kind of, some kind of uh, in rust in the gold, we keep on rubbing the gold, hmm? keep on rubbing the gold, rubbing. And, to the, and uh, so much so that at the last, there's no gold, there's no rust also. And so much of the thing was, uh, you know, therapy was kind of introduced to the patient's frail body. At last, there was no disease, but no health also. Well, and that, that is the situation which we see in modern day kind of, uh, you know, because the, the motivation, the approach of the treatment is very, very pathetic. The, the sincere motivation, the sincere approach is not there. Only thing is how best, as if, these are, the, so therefore it is very important for us to first of all know the condition of the patient. Well, condition of the patient accordingly, then you treat. Hmm? Then wherever possible, as I told you, wherever possible, when, you know, with the, especially the solid tumors, particularly the solid tumors are very, have a very good response to the moxibustions. Moxibustion, solid tumors, you could easily kind of feel it, easily kind of define that, you know. There, the moxibustions works very, very well, but not only once, but twice, thrice. I have, in, in, earlier in Chennai, there was an old, very old woman with the NHL, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma with the kind of swelling, you know, the, in, the, that, uh, what the Western biomedical science calls the lymphodenopathy. Lymphodenopathy, lymph node. You know, swelling, 
painful and was also obstructing the, obstructing the kind of food intake. You know? But it's in such conditions, medicine alone doesn't work that very uh, effectively as well very quickly also. Well, so you have to ask the patient whether you want to receive the moxibustions. You have to give each and every details of the moxibustions. What will happen to you when you give the moxibustion? Hmm? How much pain you, you can expect? You know, how much relief you can expect? What kind of, uh, you know, the changes it can bring? After that, patient will start complaining. Well, nowadays, the situation is very different. But we, we are looking at the modern day, gen, modern day societies. So each and every dealings with, uh, uh, from the doctor to the patient have to very cautiously kind of... Uh, the jela first, in the, in the very first kind of, uh, you know, the, uh, the sittings of the Mokza the version, they, she, <laughs> she started crying like anything. She start, also she started shouting like anything. You know? But our mokza, bash, mokza, they are uh, mokza, especially in the form of what we call it, sir, sirte, sirte nang sirte are very quick. You know? If you give mokza in a tower rang, it takes long, it takes long time. Even one mokza takes maybe two, three minutes, two minutes sometimes to burn, uh, to, uh, you know, the, uh, then you, but you have to give more than 10. Day than 10, like, right? Day than 10, like, nishu yenze tso, sikduwa. Tigus ki mokza jabbu gu arwa, da. Rwa, day than 10, like, the chik nye ro chap cha, and it doesn't really, really uh, uh, make out much. So you and when you it, when it comes to cello, the body takta goes to the doctor should be like a like a you know they have some measure of confidence in himself, like a tiger, you know, prowling upon his prey. Doctor, this the chicken and very one or two moksha, that too not that very effective. It doesn't really help. It goes more pro, more problem to the patient. So therefore, it's important. Now, now after that. Then one, after one month, when she came back, and she readily came to us and saying that, no, should, I, should I need the second sittings? And then third sittings. After third, fourth sittings, and this, this lymphodenopathy, you can expect almost like total kind of control and uh, the very quick kind of uh, shrinkage of the tumor. The idea of the mokza, idea of the mokza was basically to stop the kind of flow of the blood to the tumor. The, flowing, the flow of the blood helps the tumor to grow. And with the help of the strong mokza, you are actually blocking the kind of supply of these nutrients to the tumor. And slowly, slowly, the poor tumor shrinks and dies. So that should be the kind of, uh, your, your uh, kind of, uh, what do you call it, approach. Your way of thinking when you give the, uh, the, the, the kind of mokza. Well, and then also the bloodletting. Now, bloodletting is now actually a very important part of our own traditions in comes in the physical therapies. Well, but we have to be very, very careful in this society. Now, in legally, and legally, the chimtone, bloodletting was actually almost like a, it's it's banned. Right? Chimtone che chugu yomare, bloodletting is though. And it has earlier in, in uh, you know, there were so, so many rules, so many laws has been imposed also. Now, these days, one, we have to be very, very careful in giving the bloodletting. Mm, to be very on the safer side, very safer side. All the precaution has to be, you know, properly, meticulously maintained so that there's no complaint from the patient, no complications of the patient. Mm? But it may be very helpful still. May be very helpful, but we have to be very cautious. And then, what other kind of therapies we have? Well, when it comes to the kind of condition of the you know patients who have been who have been now who have become your your when it when it comes to, when the patient was undergoing chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, 
patients belong to the, <laughs> more, uh, the allopathic doctor. Well, once the patients have completed the, all the causes of the chemo, radiations, and even the surgery also, then patient starts to take our medicines in the full scale. Then the final patient belongs to us. Well, in that situation, diet, lifestyle, very important. I have seen many patients, even younger, among the younger generations, younger generations with colorectal cancer, with colorectal cancer, well, after the surgery, after the chemo, after the surgery, after the chemo, in one year, two years, they, they have done very well. But because of their non-adherence, non-adherence to the proper kind of food and lifestyle, the kind of uh, the recurrence, you know, the rate of recurrence is very high. Once it recurs, then probably the allopathic medicines have nothing much. They, now you can't go on getting another round of chemotherapy. Another round of chemotherapy will give another kind of, you know, setback. Another kind of, you know, the a, a totally downward kind of, you know, push to your entire kind of immune systems in the body system. So therefore, diet and lifestyle, exercises, what? Exercise. We should also try to encourage the patient to do, you know, a lot of exercises. An important thing is the mental setup. Doctor should be always, you know, uh, should build up the confidence of the patient that this is not the end of the chapter. Right? Where there is a will, there is a way. Where there is a disease, there is a medicine. There are no diseases. There are no diseases which we cannot cure. Brother, there are no diseases which Sawarikpa cannot cure. But there are ample type of patients which we cannot cure. Well, meet means the individual. Well, that patient, we find it very difficult to cure, but we may not find it difficult to cure the, the disease the patient is having. The, the patient's mentality, patient's emotional kind of status, spiritual kind of well-being are also very, very important. Because now cancer has become some kind of very complicated and... Uh, uh, you know, issue that every kind of uh, modalities, treatment modalities has to be followed up. There cannot be any kind of easy solution. There cannot be any magic bullet in the treatment of cancer. I am very positive. I am very positive. I am very fully, con uh, you know, the kind of, uh, con uh, what do you call it, uh, mm, decide, uh, this, this kind of decisive, decisive kind of, uh, you know, confidence in me that there cannot be any magic bullets in the cure of the cancer. It has to be a comprehensive one. It has to be, it has to involve not only the medications, but detoxification, or well-being of the patient, well, the spiritual well-being, the mental well-being, emotional well-being. Well, then only we can definitely, definitely, we are, there are many patients who have recovered completely also. I have, I have many friends also, Japanese friends, even, you know, the, uh, the friends abroad who have, you know, th got through their own kind of proper diet and proper lifestyle have totally come out of the disease and then now become an advocate of the cancer care and management. Yes, that's possible. That's because of the sheer adherence to the proper, proper kind of, you know, the lifestyle and the proper food habits. So therefore, this, the, uh, you know, uh, the, it is enough that we maintain, well, at least follow up, you know, not look into the, some kind of uh, easy solution, but more comprehensive, easily. If important thing is to understand the nature of the disease itself, then inform, then advise the patient to be very confident. Hmm? Patient's kind of, uh, what do you call it, the aura, the spiritual aura has to be strengthened up. Mm, patient has to be positive, then only the strength of the medicines will be all, patient will be, body will be able to receive all the strength and uh, blessings of the medicines also. Well, so thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Dorji Raptet, for this very enriching uh, topic on knowing of cancer and its important parameters. So now, uh, questions is open to the floor.
Anyone with any questions to ask? ตัวเลยเราตีนี่ดอกเราเลยดีกลุ่มน้องวัดเป็นสเกจมั้งบ่ตอนนั้นจึงเกจมั้งปัตนาวันเลยตีนี่ดีนั่นเป็นสเกจ
ตะเนเบกเกินจือเจเจกุงาลาทาตาร์ซงาทาตาร์เซเวเจลางีทาตะกึชอร์ซงกะทากาทุมมาซงอางาดินีนีซูดินเดลฮาชัสลามนะเอ
Uh, first, my request is uh, now I'm doing internship. Uh, initially, my plan and I, I was supposed to visit your uh, Bangalore, sir, but I didn't get that opportunity. And so, if there's any space and if you are allowed personally to keep an internship, then please uh, inform me personally. That would be very good. <laughs> helpful. <laughs> Uh, my question is, sir, uh, of course, uh, truth is truth, truth can't be denied. And of course, there are so many uh, doctors, Tibetan doctors, that had healed the cancer in the first or second stage. But that was not seen and there was not uh, uh, outcome as a result. But today, nowadays, you know, one patient comes at the last time, at the last stage, with the hopeless of the allopathic medicine. And then only Tibetan medicine, Tibetan doctors and practitioners, they have healed and they have cured so many cancer, and nowadays that, that in the whole world, you know, the Tibetan doctors, they are so famous regarding the cancer treatment. So my question is that when patient come at the last stage to you, sir, uh, do you regret that patient came at the last stage or do you, feel, do you appreciate the patient that they came at the last? Both. One important findings now, you know, in regarding the kind of patient's response to our treatment. You know, 10 years before, 20 years before, it's different from now. You know, earlier, I, when I, I told you before, that 20 years back, we don't really expect you know, any cancer patients who comes to us at the first place. Anyway, first place. They are not, they, we don't hear so much. Only those patients who are at the last stages, on terminal stages of the cancer, having gone through almost all the rigorous kind of therapies of chemos and radiations, then only finding no solution at last, then, and then the final solution or Tibetan medicine. Well, nowadays, it is very, uh, you know, uh, uh, it is very kind of encouraging to find that we have also many patients, many patients, new cancer patients, that look, this is the file, well, and then doctor told me this, you have three, almost like not more than six months to live, you know, at the most one year or even less. Well, and uh, they were, you know, uh, sometimes they would say that I'm in inoperable, my condition cannot be operated, and they suggested chemotherapy. That is only a palliative chemotherapy, not a curative chemotherapy. So I don't want to go. Even I will live for six, six months, one year, I would live, I would rather live at least with some kind of dignity. Then the patient belongs to you. Well, and then they are that. There are many patients who also come to us, you know, in the first place. Though the disease may not be the first place. Disease may, might have gone something like third stage, fourth stage, advanced, but then was not touched by any other kind of therapies. Even more possible. Even in that stage also, that stage also, at least I have some measure of uh, confidence that we can, we can uh, you know, definitely give a sound justice, some kind of uh, in a very good measure of control. Well, then it is quite possible that our drugs, our medicines are too, uh, is so effective to the extent that we can, we can even delay the progression of the disease by one year, two years. We can even enhance the life of the patients if the patients were only given, we have many cases where they have three months to live. And there was recently, there was one patient with a brain, brain tumor, uh, surgically removed, lymph, uh, surgically removed, and chemo done, radiation done, and it was given only three months. Hmm? And recently, now he is, you know, this is, uh, they have celebrated one year anniversary, one year of new life. That's quite possible. Huh? The young senior. So and therefore, we have, even at the, you know, we have patients who have come at the very last stages also. There are many, well, still. But then nowadays we see more and more patients who also comes to us, who also wants to, you know, the, uh, uh, the Tibetan medicines to take care, well, without going for any chemo and radiation or surgery for that matter. Okay, I think with the time constraint, uh, we shall stop with the question and answer. Uh, uh, before we end this thing, uh, can I also uh, reply to the question that was raised by Kashila yesterday? In my, my previous talk, uh, he, he asked something like, uh, for the pulse reading, why the TCM, they have the liver on the left side and uh, spleen on the right side, whereas the Tibetan, 
they have the liver on the right side and the spleen on the left side. Okay, so the possible reason could be that this, uh, the traditional Tibetan medicine, they look the liver more on the right side, and that's why they put it on the right side. Spleen is more on the left side, that's why they put it on the left side. But in TCM, we take it, think differently. We feel that like the chi of the liver, it goes to the left side, and the spleen goes to the right side. So that is the possible reason why there's a difference in the bar when you feel the pulse. Yeah? Okay. So uh, with this, uh, we have come to the end. We thank Dr. Dojit Radhvila for this informative talk and would like to request Professor Prasad Dajila to present him a memento. I'd also like to present uh, Dr. Yap uh, the uh, souvenir from the institute. Thank you, everybody.